I've decided that I am not going to make clothes. Or at, at the moment, we're, we've just had the clocks go back. I'm quite tired. Uh, I wouldn't say tired, but I just can't be bothered. To, I keep getting fabric out to make something with it. I've got patterns out and I've laid the patterns out and thought, right, I'll make something. And then at the last minute, I've changed my mind. I have started making a top there. It's another one of those la bella donna tops just from some scrap fabric i had and underneath you might just see a maroony dress which i have been making and i need to finish those off i think i made that on monday but i'm, I'm kind of half in the mood and half not i've got you can't see but on here i've made a top which has been completely uh, hacked from another pattern and when i did the pattern I decided I'd completely change it. So you'll no doubt get to see that. And um, I think I've taken it upstairs and made another top. Now, that's, that's me saying I can't be bothered to sew. <laughs> but um, the one, what I mean is those are easy sews. What I've got along here are all easy sews. They're using up fabric. I will be wearing these things when I get them finished. And, but I, I wanted to do something slightly different. I wanted to make a blouse. I wanted to make a dress. And then I keep thinking to myself, do I really want to dress at this point in time at the moment? Because I've been wearing trousers. Although today I'm wearing an old dress that, I'm, that I've am uh, that i made it, ooh, a few years back. It is, and um, what did I make this from? I think this was from a pattern. It was from a Lacala pattern, I think. And I... Do you know, I can't remember what it's from, but this is a little collar that I make to keep my neck warm. And all it is, is a bit of, it's actually like that. It's a bit of fabric that I've got double sided. I've got a seam along that end, a seam along both ends. It's got a seam down the middle and I wear it like that. You can see what the, the dress is a round neck like that. So I wear it over my neck just like that to keep my neck warm there you go so what else have i been making well i decided i want to, i decided i'm tilting that a bit more because yes i've got you kind of how can i get you nicely set up hang on <laughs> put you there well, that didn't work because you may notice I've got a change of clothes. <laughs> I am recording it. I thought I was carrying on with the with the recording and when I came to, to downloading it, it wasn't there. So I spent about 10 minutes talking to you and there was nothing on the recording. It ha I hadn't pressed the record button. So that was no good. Anyway, what I was trying to tell you was that I was, because I wasn't in the mood for sewing anything and I have shown you that, well I haven't shown you but I've told you about them and I will no doubt show you what they are. I need some, uh, just to interrupt, we've been, we've been doing decorating. God, when you get older it takes ages to decorate. <laughs> it's taken us two weeks to decorate to be fair we've had we've had the dog and well not that that's a good excuse but we uh we just haven't you know every time we started doing something that we thought he said oh he says we'll do it later and i thought oh we'll do it later so it's taken us forever to decorate let's see we are getting there we're gradually getting there and uh we are hope we're just moving furniture around removing refilling things and cupboards and things but it's taken it's taken at least two weeks but we're getting there anyway what i was going to tell you was that i hadn't done much sewing as in what i was telling you was the things that i had made are what i call easy one easy makes and i wanted to make some more complex things. i want to make a shirt dress i want to make a couple of shirt dresses and I want to make some shirts, as I've said. I've got the fabric, I've got everything. But as as what happened was, I just can't be bothered. I don't know. Everybody feel, you feel a bit lethargic when the clocks go back and when when autumn sets in and the nights get darker at about three thirty here, 
half past three in the afternoon and you're thinking oh do you really want to be doing anything so anyway tonight it is now uh it's half nine at night and it's the 11th of the 11th and what i want to show you is some i decided i want to do little things and the little things that i wanted to do one of them in particular was this and this was i think when you see the intro to my uh to my this vlog you will see uh what what is it of hers a cat a curled up cat and it's from a pattern by lisa pay from paid forward now i've never heard of paid forward and it must be an american or an australian thing but paid forward means she doesn't charge you for the patterns she does a lot of uh, stuffed animals and all sorts of things, teddy bears, and she talks through how to do them, and she offers the patterns free. And I have, in my searches of things, I've got a box full of felt. I've got greens, I've got yellows, I've got oranges. I bought some felt when I was doing the Luna Lapin uh, rabbit, which is also on the beginning, and I thought... I came across the felt and I thought, oh, I want to make something. I fancied making a pin, a needle case. So I thought, Paid Forward's got some. Lisa from Paid Forward has one. And I downloaded three, three, three of the needle cases. One of them was a dog kennel. And they, yeah, when you download it, you get them in pages like this. Uh, this is the dog kennel. And I shall put a picture up there to show you. And I'll show you the link. I'll put a picture up there. And I'll put the link to that one for Lisa Pays there. Um, and she, I also downloaded a little house. And I also downloaded a caravan. So I thought I'd do the caravan because, because I have lots of scrap fabric. I've got lots of fat quarters. I had the felt. And I thought, well, I'll make something. So I came across. I, I made this, which I love. But the only downside, I think it's too big. So the, and, and it's out, it's skew wide. So ignore that. <laughs> it's not straight. That door is on the wonk and that window is on the wonk. And the reason being, this is it. It's a little caravan. I'll describe what it's like first. And then I'll, I, I, yes, they are definitely on the wonk. It's a little caravan. The button's for the wheel. This is the button here at the front because there has to be another button on the back. The back is just plain. There's supposed to be a button here with a, a cord that comes round and fastens onto there to keep it closed. I haven't, I've yet to do that. I haven't finished that off. And then when you open it up, inside you have, this is the caravan. This is supposed to be cupboards. I've got a little needle on there. I need to put a handle on there and a handle on there and a handle on there. There's a little flower there, which has actually come out of my button box, a little 3D flower. She had embroidered some. These were meant to be, I've sewn the fabric, the felt to, the, to this fabric, where it was meant to be open. But instead, if I get my little thing here, this, things can go down there, into there like that there so we've got a little hook which she had described that as being the tap it's supposed to look like a sink there and the tap and uh, on this side we have a little pocket to put things into there and then this little piece here that lifts up for for your needles and things uh, there's two pieces of fabric that lifts up so let me just put my needle back i thought it was a great idea but when I fin ah, it's not finished, I've still got to do the cord there and I've still got a couple of other things to do. This here has to have a piece of lace across there, which I haven't, I've got some, but I haven't gone and pulled it out yet. That ribbon is, um, when you buy tops and things, sometimes you have a, no, I bought something and it was wrapped up with this ribbon. So I kept it and I, I just used that. It's like a ridged ribbon. I don't know if you can see. Can you see it's a ridged ribbon? and um i like the idea but i just felt it's a little bit too big i want something about that size even smaller perhaps just a little 
a little um, needle book. So I suddenly realised you could resize this. This was to 100 100% sizing, but you could resize it down so you had 50% sizing, which would make it half a size, or 35% or 40%, and that would reduce the size. I felt there was a lot more potential on the inside, so I, I'm busy thinking up another similar thing where I can make have a lot more use for a little needle case. Not that I use needle cases, but I just thought it would be a nice idea. It's basically, once I've completed this, it's going in my charity bag. I just figured that they could probably give it as a present or give it or sell it or do something with it. But I, I, I just enjoyed making it. You're supposed to, at least I had suggested, we everything I've done, I've done with the machine. That's not great, really too good. This is not good. And the reason why it's on the wonk is she suggested you used... Um, um, what do you call it? Interfacing that's a, a, a double, what do you call it? Oh God, what do you call it? An interfacing that's got glue on both sides so that you put it on this and when you iron it onto the, fa onto the fabric below, it sticks. Well, I didn't have any, or at least I didn't think I had any till I looked in the wrong bag and then I came across it after I finished. And because of that, when you zigzag here, I zigzagged straight there, but it kind of made the felt go wonky there. So it's slightly weird door. And the same there, I had thought I had that straight and it ended up being a bit wonky. Everything else isn't too bad. Now, she suggested blanket stitch going round here. I couldn't be bothered with blanket stitch. So what I did was a zigzag. It needs trimming up in these little pieces that are sticking up. But I did a zigzag. I did a wide zigzag. I did it in white first. Then I did it. I don't know if you can see if it come if you can get if I, one was white. Then I did yellow and then I did orange. So I've got that going all the way around here to there. And as I say, it opens up the same. It shows through there. It's turned out not bad. Not bad for a first attempt, I would say. But, as in the words of a teacher, could do better. So watch this space because I might be doing something better. But that I thought that was a good idea. Got to finish it off, though. Uh, I've yet to add the button on the back, which I should have done before I did this. But I decided at the last minute I was going to change things a bit. So that was what I made. Now then, there's something else I made, but I'm going to tell you about that in my next vlog. And, um, well, you know I said I wasn't going to do a, an advent calendar. And a couple of you said, oh, I'm going to miss it. And the more you said that, the more I was thinking, maybe I should do a little one. And so I start, I had been looking in, uh, in July, as early as July, at advent calendars. And I couldn't find what I wanted. There was a one. I'm not sure if it was prim, there was a prim one, but it was £75. And I just thought, I've done these sewing ones so many times and I've got so many tools that I've got too many. So I really didn't want to invest in another £75 with more tools. So I looked around and this is my advent calendar. I don't even know what it's, in, what it's inside it. It says, do not bend. Well, I do know what's inside, but I haven't had a look at it yet. So I thought I might let you see. And I might just do an advent calendar. It might be a bit like last time where I have to miss a couple of times. But I just figured it might be... I'm sure you just like a little bit of a chat now and again. Because some of you have told me that you are living on your own. You're widowed or you're, uh, you know, you're a widow or a widower. I might have a few men on there. I don't know. And I just thought, let's let you enjoy a little bit. So, there's two that I've got really big ones and the first one oh where did i get them from i got them from they're called traditional and traditional advent calendars and their email address is i'll put in the i'll put the link i'll put it across here put the link across here www.traditionaladventcalendars.com so what did I get? Well, I got two. And the first one, do you remember last year I did a tree? It was like a three-dimensional tree. 
and it had um, all sorts of things. No, it was, it was a tree house, a three dimensional tree house. And you, each day I put a little card thing on. Well, I thought it was rather good. And so I'm going to send that down to my granddaughter to let her have it. And I thought I'd get this one, which is very similar. It's by Roger Laborde and it's called The Night Before Christmas. And it comes flat packed like that. And it's very similar and what it is it's a little house and each day we put a little a little uh, one of these things these pop-out cards that are right the way around we uh, we put them onto their various places on the house so basically I set the house up first and then we each day for the uh, each day 1 to 24 we stick a little car, a little one of those in the house so I thought you might like to see that so that one is called the night before Christmas the night before Christmas festive pop and slot advent calendar and the other one is a lot bigger I can't remember what I got now it's a really really big one Ta -da! see how big it is now this is just a paper one but I thought you might like to see it. I thought it might you might it might appeal to you. It's actually German and it's called Oh it makes music. That's why I picked it, it makes music. It's uh, a house. I'm not sure how it makes music. Um oh there's different songs that it plays. Well there's a little thing there. Little holes there, I don't know if you can see. There are little holes there and the music must come out of there. Oh yes, because on the back, can you see, there's a little thing there and that's where the batteries are. And basically each time, I think each time I open a window, a song comes out because there's 24 songs. So I thought you might like that. I thought that would be rather nice. So this is, it's a German one, a Weihnachtslieder. Weihnachtslieder, whatever that is, 24 sounds of Christmas carols, and they do all sorts of things. Um, I can't remember what it said, something about the songs. I don't think you get the words, but you get the actual music. Activate the calendar by pressing the on switch on the battery compartment, open the calendar door, and press the image to start the music. Press again to stop the music. Each song is about 40 seconds long and can be played as many times as you wish. So, I will do an advent calendar. I will do 24 days and you're going to see it with that one and with that one. I thought you kind of convinced me that I should do it. So, watch this space. December the 1st, first time. And I, as I say, it might not always be every day, but we'll catch up when I miss the days. We'll do a little run of two or three. Will I do the Sherlock Holmes? Um, um, I shall have a think about that. <laughs> so watch that space for the Sherlock Holmes as well. I, I tell, told myself I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. It's uh, but. I, the more I think about it, the more I think I'm sure a lot of you would like to like to see an advent calendar. You might not, you know what I mean? Some of you might say no, but I do know that a lot of you say you're thrilled to bits at yet that I come on and chat to you. So, two advent calendars and um, two advent calendars and possibly, very, very possibly, I don't know, Sherlock um, could do Sherlock, might. I haven't got a Sherlock. Well, I have got a Sherlock, but it's not the Sherlock that I usually use. But let's watch, watch this space. I'll see if I can get another one. A few of you agreed on my comment that uh, I confess to buying fabric, but I don't go out drinking. So the cost of a drink is probably more than the cost of the fabric that I buy. And it reminded me of my father because those of you who have been watching my vlogs long enough will know that my father was French. You will also know that he was a watchmaker and jeweller. And he used to repair watches and clocks as well. And um, people used to come in. The one thing they used to find was um, the town that we lived in at the time was a mining community, a coal mining community. 
and people who were miners didn't mind paying for to get their watches fixed but the hoi polloi, the posh people who were in the next town, used to come in and when they used to ask how much it would something would cost, uh, say for example, someone would bring a watch in to get repaired, and if he was a miner, my father would say it'll cost you fourteen ninety five, fourteen pounds ninety five, to get an overhaul and clean, and the guy would say yes, just go ahead with it. When can I pick it up? And my father would say, well, you can have it on Friday. You know, if it's a Monday, you can have it have it at the weekend. But if it was somebody from the hoi ploy, they would say, Oh, I didn't expect to have to pay that much. And my father would say, Well, what did you expect to pay? Oh, definitely not as much as that. And so he would say, How much do you spend to go out for a drink? When you go out for a drink to the to your pub, because often they used to go to the posh pub around the corner. Or when you go out for a drink, how much would you or if it's someone who doesn't drink or doesn't doesn't go out to a pub, he'd say, Do you drink? And they'd say, Well, yes I do. And he'd say, What do you drink? And they say, Well, I drink whiskey. Okay. How much do you pay for your bottle of whiskey? Oh, I pay something like ten pounds. And he'll say, Right, and how many glasses of whiskey can you get out of that? And they'll say, Oh, about four. And he'd say, Right, two pounds fifty a glass. It and how long does that last you? Oh, I have a glass of whiskey almost every other night. So he says, Right, a bottle of whiskey, you go through a bottle of whiskey once a week then. Well, yes. And a bottle of whiskey costs you ten pounds. This watch is going to be cleaned and it's going to cost you £14.50 and that should last you for a year. So if you spread those whiskies for a year, you will have paid more for your whiskies than you will have paid for your watch to be repaired. Oh, I never thought of it that way. And so then they'd, they'd, they'd get it done. But there was one occasion where he, uh, he, he used to repair the clocks for the for the colonel porter and colonel porter was the man who invented newcastle brown ale now those of you who are from the northeast will know what newcastle brown ale is it's a beer and it's a very famous beer in our area and hopefully in other areas but it's very famous in, up in the northeast and he used to go and maintain the clocks for colonel porter in his hall and uh, his son when he died his son took over and his son was a very tall man and very posh and he came one day, he used to come and very, is your father in? And I'd say, yes, he's at this bench work. Can I speak to him, please? So then my dad would come through and he'd say, hello, Mr. Dussart, I've got a clock for you to look at. And he handed my dad a little, a little alarm clock. It wasn't very big. I, I, I think it was a folding alarm clock. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But it was, a, it was an antique one. And, um... My father looked at it and he said, well, I'm not sure if I can repair that. Can't you? And he said, well, no, he said, it's, uh, it needs some parts made and I don't know if I can, re I don't think I can repair it. And she said, oh, what a shame. I would have loved you to have repaired it. So anyway, he went away after they had a long conversation and my dad turned around and said, I could have repaired that, but I would have had to make the part and he wouldn't have paid what I was going to offer, tell him it would cost him to get made, repaired. So anyway, four years later, this Colonel Porter's son came in. I can't remember what he was called. He came back into the shop and he said, is your father in? And I said, no, unfortunately not. He said, can you tell him I finally got that clock fixed? Had to take it down to bloody London and they fixed it for me. Kept it for two years before they fixed it and it cost me £300. And so, of course, I said, oh, golly, that's a lot of money. But I didn't dare tell him what my father had said. So anyway, when my father, I think my father was retired then. And when he came in to see me, because he used to come in and still repair the odd clocks, uh, I said, Colonel Porter, son's been in and he said that he, you know that I said do you remember that clock that you said you could have done and you could have made the parts but you wouldn't but he wouldn't have paid the money he says yes I said how much would you have charged him for it he said well I would have had to charge him at least a hundred pound and I said do you not know how much you paid for it <laughs> to get done down in London and when I told him he said bloody hell if I'd known that much I would have charged him more <laughs>
<laughs> so it just goes to show you see some people will pay a lot of money and some people won't but the point the moral of the story is for 14.95 you can get your watch fixed and you'd spend more money on drink than you would on getting your watch fixed but you're reluctant to get your watch fixed because you think it costs a lot to get done <laughs> so you've got to you've got to weigh things out so for me spending money on fabric is not a bad idea now that was a long way around to tell you i've spent some more money on fabric and the reason why was because on instagram this picture came here then this is what i'm talking about she has a hood on the top and she has a pocket there a pocket and then this long tab on the neck oops and um i think the cuffs have got velcro on and the sleeves it's more of a rectangle i'll have to see if i can find another one to let you see but it's called rain kiss this one is from a different website notice the price 69 pound this is a blue one so you can see basically it's a, a square and if i um slide up a little bit and go to the other pictures there just so i can get that arrow oh what's happened there if i get that arrow there then you can see that's what it looks like sideways so it's got a little vent up the side and there can't see much about that but here there's the vent it actually goes quite high up and on the back is the label see what i mean another big label you need to have a big label on your garments this is what it falls down into into a pocket and i think that the pocket is on the front of the coat I don't think it's there I think it's on the front but I think the pocket if I then go back there that's the pocket and look they've even given me the measurements I can get a rough idea of what it's going to look like that that's basically the pocket's going to be there and I think when you turn that pocket inside out you get that that's on the inside of the pocket so it's coming around in my head what I should do and back to the girl there let's have a look at another one let's have a look they've got all sorts of colors look at all of these all lovely colors and it was a bright one it was a smiley one that caught my eye but 69 pound i'm sure we could turn out some for cheaper than that um what should i go for uh, that see what that one tells us it's that's a bit of a psychedelic -y one 68 pound that's a pound cheaper so if you go to the shop you get it a pound cheaper oh look it's been reduced from 79 pound to 68 pound there you go there's the pocket and as i say i think the label's going to be on the inside i can now see that what they have down the side here are poppers so you can open or close the vent there i can also see that this is basically a wrist a wrist strap with the velcro on i may that probably is a better idea than elasticated see what are the ways it shows you there pocket there it's got a lot of potential i just like it and again they've given me a diagram so they're almost giving away what it's going to look like let's have one more look at another one so we can get an idea and this is what a lot of people do this is stealing this is what the way people steal dress designers let's have a look at this one this one is it's called Japanese Blossom and it might only give you one view no it doesn't there's another view so let's go there there's your in kiss pack pocket there's your Mac and that's only they only give you two oh no they give you another picture there so the hood there seems to be slightly different is it different let's have a look does it show you any difference she's got a hat on uh, let's go to that one is a hood up it's very similar a similar type of hood so there you go those are all the patterns it was a bit like do you remember some of you may remember packer max because this here is a pocket and you fold it up and it all tucks into the pocket and i remember those but i thought wow that's a good idea but they were wanting 61 pounds for it and i was thinking no way i wouldn't pay 61 pounds bit like that man <laughs>
what 61 pounds for a mac which is probably you know it's a, it's an individual thing but you know we saw it we can do it a lot cheaper so i thought i could make a couple of those so i then went online and um found some found some kind of it says it's there uh, now this is from my pound fabrics again and it's water resistant polyester fabric so it didn't cost much I mean, theirs were £61 each, and I thought, right, let's see if I can make one for less. So I found two lots of water-resistant water polyester fabric. One is in blue. It's called Floral Field Water-Resistant Polyester Fabric in blue. And the other one is Floral Field Water-Resistant Polyester Fabric in pink. And it was £2 a metre. Now, I'm not going to argue over £2 a metre. So, and I thought, ooh, let's make something with that. So there's the first one. I bought three metres of each. So that's the first one. So, and it is, it's lovely water, it's got a lovely waterproof feel about it. So if I'm going to make this, oh, that's it, we go that way. So my, my Mac would be like that with a hood with an opening probably a zip there a pocket there and it looks like it's square with some sleeves so that's easy enough to make so that's the first one three meters of that six pounds six pounds for the fabric uh let's let's say two pounds for the effort and let and well let's say 40 pounds for the enjoyment because i will enjoy doing that but that i bought that one that has got a lovely feel to it i've got it caught under my chair but that's the first one and that one is the floral field water resistant polyester fabric blue so if you're wanting some get there quick two pound a meter so that's the first one put that over there so you can see and the second one is the floral field water resistant polyester fabric pink and that is this one again nice pattern so i thought i thought i can make two of these and when i go out i can wear one in the rain when i'm walking dogs or if we're going for a walk in in the winter and it's raining i can put one on because we have had a lot of rain recently and I could put a pink one on one time and a blue one, the blue one on the other time. Not bad. I don't think that's bad at all. So those are the fabrics that I've got. And I don't, a lot of you agreed with me that you felt that getting fabric was not bad. I'm not an alcoholic. I don't drink. <laughs> so, and it's, my crime is not too bad. My, my, my ex-mother-in-law used to love smoking she used to love smoking she loved bingo and her comment was now it's my only pleasure the cigarettes and the bingo so don't tell me off <laughs> but anyway that is the two bits of fabric that i've got and i just i'm just looking forward to making that i think it'll be a fairly straightforward job i haven't got a pattern so i'm going to make it from there i'm basically as i say going to make the rectangle because it's a rectangle with two little sleeves and i'll have elasticated cuffs i'll have an opening there so i might have a little bodice or something going in there with the opening and then the hood attached so watch this space and i'll let you see what it turns out like that one i will have to make quickly because we're coming to winter and we're going to get a lot of rain in fact we've had a lot of rain i think i'll stop there so i'm going to love you and i'm going to leave you and i'll catch you next time bye